Okay, welcome back. So, as I alluded to in the last video, I've got a little bit of a plan hatching uh, that might work for the hardtail. Just a little bit of a, an aesthetically pleasing change I'm going to try and make happen. Um, and that is going to involve um, eliminating the oil cooler. I say eliminating, I still have an oil cooler per se, but not as stock. Um, it's uh, well, let's let's show you let's show you on Jens first because that bike has got the oil cooler on. Show you what I'm on about and get you familiar with the territory. And then I'll show you the hardtail inside, which has got it without, and um, and I'll talk a bit more about what I'm planning on doing. Okay, so there we go, front of the bike, oil cooler in here, um, and you know it's it's not crazy, but it's it's. A little bit ugly, especially this one's getting a little bit tatty now. I could do the respray, um, but um, yeah, it's just kind of just there, there on the front. Um, you've got the pipe work. I think it flows this way. Um, it's got oil runners in here. Um, there's another hose mirrored on the other side of the bike. They meet here. Cooling the oil cooler. You've got an exit fitting. On the bottom of the cooler just down here and then that goes on a pipe that flows around the bottom and into the sump so that's kind of how it looks and if we shoot across into the house now and um, have a look at the bike with out the oil cooler and i'll uh, explain a bit more what i'm on about and there's the bike without the oil cooler um obviously no down pipes at the front there so that's uh, opened it up a bit more there will obviously be down pipes um, but you can see that just removing the cooler there just opens up that front space pretty nicely. I think it looks, you know, given that I want to try and slimline and minimalise everything on this, um, losing that would be, in my opinion, quite a nice look and something a little bit more unusual to go for. Um, now, there are a range of different oil coolers out there. Some hardly do a load of ones, I think, that you can mount on um, I've seen people mount ones underneath there um, there's ones that mount onto the down pipes that are quite cylindrical there but at the end of the day they're all still visible and there and very much oil coolers um, and if that's the case I, j I would just normally leave the other oil cooler on there it doesn't bother me that much what I would like to do is keep this look and the way I'm th thinking of doing it is the frame rails which uh, are separate units they bolt on here and run down to there um, is actually contain the oil in the frame rails and then just have some fitting points here that can run and then some kind of t-section in there as well to link them across so the oil will actually be contained in here um, that's the plan I can then start losing all these brackets as well um, and that one is obviously the engine mounting plate uh, there I'm thinking at the moment the crossover pipe will be there so kind of effectively getting rid of, rid of that but still keeping the strength with the pipe there um, and then you'll just have the lines that will just run to there so that's, that's the plan um, so let's get back into the shed and we'll talk so a bit more about it the plan I've got for doing this is not to so much eliminate the oil cooler but um, incorporate it elsewhere uh, oil in frame like the old triumph really um, now it's not my idea by any stretch or anything like that um, I need to do some sort of kind of credit where credit's due um, I mean I saw a Bonneville without an oil cooler probably for this on the I think it was a Jack Pine scrambler which if you google it like a desert steady one that was built up a few years ago and um, that, that I think I'm correct in saying that they did not run any oil cooler. There's not, um, they haven't rebooted it, hidden it anywhere else, or done oil and frame. It's literally they just got rid of it. Apparently, these bikes are can ride fine without an oil cooler. Um, they apparently torn the engine down afterwards after time, and there's been no ill kind of adverse effects by just bunging it up. I don't know, I'm not really sure that's it, that, you know, don't believe everything you read on the internet or it might completely be true. I'm sure there's a lot of people chime in with different reasons and in fact that's something I have found trying to research this is um, everyone's got an opinion of 
good reasons, bad reasons, good reasons, bad reasons. It gets very <sighs> crazy in the end. So basically, theirs was a carb Bonnie. So the Jack Pine one, which we think ran without an oil cooler, um, I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to run the oil cooler, but run it in the frame rails. Now I think, credit where credit's due, I think I'm right in saying that one of the first guys to do this was a chap on um, some of the Triumph forums, I think he did quite a lot on Triumph Net, um, uh, sorry Triumph Rat, um, was Rod Burner, I think that's the name he went under, and I think he did this ages ago to his frame rails and got rid of the oil cooler, mainly because he was getting narked with them getting in the way of the exhaust pipes he was making up and on off on off and all that kind of thing. So I think credit is due to him for doing the first ones and um, but then subsequently to that I think there is a company that do do you can basically just buy the frame rails the fittings all welded up and done and um, they're in the states um, I think it's quite expensive again all the things you know I quite like about this it seems to be expensive they're somewhere I think in the region of 800 and something dollars um, so yeah that's kind of financially not viable um, so the cheaper alternative I thought was to pick up a spare set of frame rails off eBay which I did and um, they were 20 odd quid each I think so 40 ish something quid for the set um, and um, give it a go so it's kind of what I'm trying to do is do it as a reversible mod if things don't work out because um, I'm planning on doing the welding and so on myself which is fairly ambitious considering I'm not a welder um, I have very little experience with welding you know and it's usually just bits together not actually creating a leak proof pressure tight um, um, part on, on, on a frame rail which um, I might get some extra help in um, I think but I would like there's a big part of me that wants to do this myself I don't want to a lot of this I want to do for my own kind of personal pride but we'll see we'll, we'll get on to that um, I also got a lot of um, some recent information from um, George at Tech Bike Parts um, whilst I was researching this whole thing over the past week um, I, I can't remember how I stumbled on it but there was uh, one of the tech kind of street scrambler bikes he's done there was a picture of that and I was like hang on that, that hasn't got an oil cooler either I looked on and sure enough he's done the same sort of thing there's been various other bikes that have, have done it builders that have done this to to the bikes have run the oil in the frame um so uh, it is kind of tried and tested um mine's efi so i need to work out where i'm going to put the sensor as well there's like a temperature sensor thing um uh, which would also need to be taken care of um but um yeah, let's show you the frame rails and have a bit of a look and an idea at what I'm thinking I might do. It's all a little bit vague and kind of, we'll see, um, but that's the fun bit, a bit of a journey. Right, so there we go, there's the spare set of frame rails. Um, and basically what we want to do, um, going to lose obviously the lugs here for the... Um, uh, oil cooler because we're not going to be obviously mounting that there anymore so these can be cleaned up um, as I said I'm thinking of having this kind of t-piece joining across there so I can lose the plate um, and the lugs here and clean that up as well um, those are obviously the engine mounts so we keep those um, uh, there's the side sand switch there and if I'm cleaning all this up I might as well get rid of that so that is now redundant and then you've got a couple of let's bring the camera in the rain so yeah so we've got like holes there that side you've got like the cable guide um, holes that had the little plastic clips for you i think it was a clutch cable or whatever um let's see yeah there's one there one there um, so that can go, this will probably go, side sand switch, I don't need that, that will go, and I think there's some, looking at them, there was some 
holes down here as well. Um, so this is the bit I'm trying to work out now is how much of this do we need to actually have oil in. Um, it looks like other people have welded all these up. In fact, George did advise me to either rebraze or re-weld the Triumph joins because they, they will leak, he said in capitals. Um, so I need to try and work that out because um, I'm, I'm pretty much making this up as I go along, really. I'm not uh, constructing a complete plan. I'm just looking at it and sorting it as I go along. I was wondering if... I don't need to use the whole of the tubing would it perhaps be better to cut that and then that way I can pr probably properly clean out the tubes and um, the pinholes there you know if I cut it there as well um, I can get some copper tube down there and then fill up the holes there um, and then maybe put like a slug in and then rejoin them up and then so I'm sure there's something up with this area where you've got the casting here for the side stand switch I'm gonna have to reread about this um, something to bear in mind there I know someone did something about filling that up with resin or, or something but I'm just wondering if, if I was just to cut it put a slug in and then re-weld that on so I might I might end up having it kind of filled in there and then you know up to about there being for the oil cooler because um, these this the oil cooler doesn't hold an awful lot of oil really um, I mean if you can imagine you've got lines there that there cooling fins along here um, and there so I mean that probably is you know it's like a half a cup full of oil so it's not a vast amount so this is this in itself is gonna probably have more oil in it um, yeah, so I'm gonna to, I'm gonna try and think on that as I go along. But the main the main thing I need to do is obviously clean it up. These are covered in mud and a bit rusty and uh, grubby. Um, get them back to bare metal for any welding, um, and get rid of the bracketry that I don't need and clean that up, and then uh, go from there. Um, incidentally, uh, yeah, just before I start hacking. Trying to work out what I should do, whether I should leave this in place, because um, obviously I want to kind of lose it, but then I'm going to put the tubing in. Um, as you can see, it's kind of a, it is slightly adjustable here, probably for the ease of taking the engine in and out and getting this off. The Triumph have done it that way. You've got a bit of an adjustment there when you're unbolting. I think the best thing to do is probably going to be to get rid of that completely, and then when we get to that stage of the fabrication, get this on the bike tighten it all up and then work out the distance we're going to need for the tubing there um, I think I'm probably wrong but um, hey ho live and learn and whilst we've got the oil cooler out as well you see there's the uh, as it differs on the on the carb models you've just, you've just got like the banjo bolt there you haven't got the, uh, the temperature sensor thing. I think it's temperature sensor I imagine that's what it would be uh, in there um, so I've got to make allowances for that. Some people have used the oil filler cap, tapped that and put that in there. Um, other people tapped a cross tube at the bottom. I think George was saying he did his cross tube. He kept that because they mounted like a sump guard to it and then I think he had like the cross piece somewhere here um, and I think he said he tapped it there but he said if he was doing it again he wouldn't have put it there. That was a bit a bit tight. So um, yeah, something, something to bear in mind. So we're starting to get a nice little pile of junk bracketry um, so I've pretty much just got to clean up where we've chopped them now get in there with uh, a flap disc um, hopefully start try removing 
bit of paint as well, cleaning these up, and we're a step closer. Well, we're all getting there, um, so kind of gone in just with a uh, um, 40 grit flap disc. Just got the worst of the uh, what was left of the welds off. Um, that's all nice and well, I say smooth. It's, it's kind of level, but I'm, it's quite a coarse, obviously uh, flap disc. So I think I've got a 60 and a uh, sorry, yeah, 60 or an 80 and a 120. So I'm just going to go in with something um, less kind of high grit and um, just, well, clean clean and dress this up a little bit so it's nice and smooth and uh, get a bit more of this paint and rust off. Well, that's... Um it's been quite a while actually um, cleaning all those up, but um, I'm pretty happy with the results. So come and have a look. There we are, some delugged frame rails. Most of the uh, most of the powder coats off, but um, obviously I'll give these a media blast and whatnot. But it's just to get most of the powder coat off, ready for the welding. Right then, so I've got these where I want them uh, today. Uh, I'm pretty chuffed with that. I think they're looking nice and delugged and streamlined um, it's quite a fun little project to be doing this I, I didn't really have it in the plan but it's kind of just naturally evolved that way it'd be pretty cool if I could make it happen because I think it would look really nice and a little bit different on the bike um, these are spare frame rails if I do cock stuff up or my whatever happens I'll, I've got the stock set to revert back to but um, I really hope it doesn't come to that because I'm quite keen on this idea um, I need to work out now what the next stage is. Um, I want to be able to clean the inside of the tubing out. Really, obviously, there's going to be oil in there that's going to be recirculating through the engine, so I want to have that nice and clean. At the moment, it's obviously quite difficult to get a good flush through there um, because um, there's not really any. There's small holes, but not really a good exit hole. Um, so I'm thinking. I mean, I. I think most people tend to use, or the people that have done it have used most of the frame rail to hold oil. Um, I'm just wondering if, I say I, for instance I had the section that's just between my hands there, and I cut it off there and there, um, I could then get in and clean all that out really well. I'm just thinking of reattaching it and it being strong enough, but um, I mean that's like a your cafe racer hoop if you want, on the back of your subframe. Um, if I had like a solid metal slug like that and then rejoined, so if that's one end of the frame, pop that in there, got my other bit of metal over there and sort of welded around there. If that was solid, that might make it leak proof. Um, I can leak test it and stuff at work, I do that at work anyway. Um, pressure testing things so I can rig something up there to try that. But that's a little way off yet. I've got to get my welding chops up because um, I don't weld enough to be confident about this yet. It's going to be a, a bit of a trial by fire. Um, but there we go. That's the plan. Um, yeah, like I say, I'm, I hope it works out because I think it would just look really nice on the bike. So, um, yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. See you next time.